So now in this video, we're going to talk about bypassed out. So that's uh, what I wired these up for. It looks like just three series diodes. They're actually shot key diodes right there. This is actually going to be what we're going to attach the load to. So that's a direct connection straight across right there. It's a barrel plug there, so I can plug it into a load. To uh, power it, I'm actually planning on using uh, USB power banks. So uh, we got the USB plug there, and on the other side, I have alligator clips. And I can just clip them directly to the diodes. And uh, ultimately, we do not want these diodes to conduct if at all possible. And uh, so we clip it there. So the positive is coming to the cathode. There's the gray band there. And then we have the anode over there. So that's reverse bias. That's the direction we don't uh, want it to conduct. And uh, so it won't conduct in that way. We will look at when it will conduct by uh, coming to the schematic diagram. So as I said before, I had a uh, red jumper on uh, that little unit I put together gonna go across the side of the load we want more positive and then a black jumper down there on the other end coming to the side that's more negative so I'm gonna use 5 volt power banks as I said before alligator clips going across the shocky diode it'll be reverse bias uh, more positive where the cathode is more negative where the anode is the shocky diodes I'm gonna use they have a forward voltage of about 0.3 volts and they can block about 45 volts well reverse bias those ones that I showed you and uh, so we're nowhere near the voltage it will take before it will start uh, conducting reverse bias. The reason why we're gonna use that. First, uh, let's talk about solar cells. So sometimes you got a string of uh, solar cells in a solar panel to build up a certain voltage. Let's just say 10 volts. And then a string of series for 10 volts and a string of series for 10 volts. Now you could just put them all in series for 30 volts um, but a lot of times you got 10, maybe, volts, and then a diode that is uh, parallel to that, wired like this. And um, so, in that way, if that part of the panel shades, or maybe you got three separate panels or whatever, um, one shades completely, if you don't have the diodes, then you have a current path through one and the other. Their voltages will add up, so if they're 10 volts, it'll add up to 20 volts and make its way here but it comes to the other one again we're going to pretend like the dial's not there if that one's not going to let uh, or if it's not pushing current because there's no light it also doesn't let current flow through it so ultimately it can kill all of the power you're going to get from this the current can only flow as much as the weakest uh, string of cells right there the one current path if you make it so current can't flow through one point Remember, we're pretending like the dial's there. N current won't flow through any of it. It could stop completely. So that's where the bypass dial comes in. So that's pushing current. That's pushing current at uh, 20 volts total, 10 plus 10 to the load. Now you got 20 volts across the load. So, I mean, your system should be providing 30, but uh, since that one's dead, you're getting 20 instead of zero. That's the alternative. Now, we're gonna come to the power banks that I have. So I put, uh, I was doing this without the shocky diodes again. I had three power banks, attach a load, and with a light enough load, um, ultimately I want to provide power. So I want to provide, you know, about an amp of current approximately in that range. And uh, so we have three power banks. Each one of them can provide about two amps. So we're staying about halfway below that. But in case, when I attach a load, to the system again we're going to pretend well it doesn't matter if the diodes are there if all three of these are on then we have uh, 15 volts right there across the load current flow no problem problem is i have two power banks that seem to like to turn on uh, pretty well and uh so they're providing 5 10 volts and i have a third one that doesn't want to turn on and uh that's pretty common so we got uh, more negative on that side more positive uh, coming around here we have the potential of 10 volts because that's 5 plus 5 right there of going across the one that is off and I'm pretty sure that's how I fried one so I built the three series shot key dials right there to work as bypass out so this one doesn't want to turn on now we have uh, 5 volts going through there 
the load it can go through the shot key dial right there so um, we got 10 volts shot key dial though starts uh, conducting well forward bias so that means that side's more positive that side's more negative again we're this one's not on so we got more negative to the cathode and more positive to the anode so it's going to conduct current building up about 0.3 volts so the power bank that doesn't want to turn on for whatever reason it's going to have that side more positive but only about 0.3 volts compared to that side being more negative and so pretty sure it won't damage it at all that's a lot less voltage than the 10 volts uh, right there and uh, so that's what it's for that's why it's bypass it gives you a path that's alternative to uh, what you normally would have when this voltage builds up then current can flow through there uh, more easily than it's actually pushing the current and uh, so it's not going to go to the diode it's actually pulling it away and adding to the total voltage hopefully that makes sense so again ideally these would all turn on right when you attach a load and uh, like no current flows through the diodes that is ideal but if something goes wrong you have an alternative path there so that either this supply is not cutting power to the whole uh, circuit or it's not getting destroyed by a reverse voltage